Hey there, it's Kevin Kennedy, and welcome to episode number three of Fusion Fridays. By the end of this video, you'll know how to save different versions of your files and how to cache files for offline viewing in Fusion 360. To get started, I'll go ahead and create a simple cube that we'll use for demo purposes. I'll select Box from the Create drop-down menu, and I'll click on the top plane and then the center origin. Now I'm just going to drag out to a random distance, and then I'll click with my mouse, and I'll drag the arrow up another random distance. I'll select New Component as the operation in the Box dialog box. And then I'll click OK to exit the box command. Now before we do anything, I'll double click on the component and rename this box demo, as it's a good idea to always rename your bodies and components so it becomes a habit. Now if we take a look at the tab up top here, we'll see that it says Untitled, and it has this little asterisk next to it. Now that little asterisk means that the file has not been saved yet. So first I'm going to open my data folder, and you don't have to do this, but I just want you to see what happens here. So I'll go ahead and click the save icon, and you'll see that you're prompted to type in the name of the file and choose the location. I'll type in save demo for the name, and I'll click this drop down arrow to toggle the location folders. Now I could select any folder for the location here, but I'm going to leave the location set to the Product Design Online folder, and I'll go ahead and click Save. And you'll see that it will save that file directly to the data panel in the chosen folder. Now that we've saved our file, if we take a look at the tab up in the top left-hand corner, we'll see that it shows a V1 for version number one right next to our file name. And if we hover over the name, it will give us a little tooltip that shows us the full file name which can be helpful if we had a long file name that was cut off here. And it will also show the folder in the branch that the file is saved to. Now, because Fusion 360 is saving our file to the cloud, we don't have to continually click the save icon unless we want to save new versions. Now, this confuses a lot of users since we're so programmed to constantly hit that save button so we don't lose any of our work. So let's take a look at what I mean. We'll right click on the front face of the box and select the press pull feature. Now I'm simply going to drag this out a bit, again just to a random distance for demo purposes, and I'll hit OK in the offset dialog box. Now if I go back up to the save icon and select it again, I can type in extended box for the version description and click OK. And you'll see that just a few seconds after clicking OK, the version number will change from V1 to V2. Now let's go ahead and put a hole in our box. I'll activate the hole feature with a keyboard shortcut letter H, and then I'll select the top face of the box. And I'm just going to click OK in the hole dialog box. Now I'll hit the save icon again, and I'll type in added hole and click OK. And shortly after, you should see that we are now at version number three, or V3 for short. So let's take a look at how we can actually see each version of the file. I'll open up the data panel and scroll down until I see the box file. Now if I click on the version number and scroll down, you'll see that it opened up with a dropdown showing each version that we've saved so far. And they're in descending order here, so our latest file is at the top. Now if we hover over the versions, we'll see two different icons. The folder icon on the right allows you to open that version up if you click on it. So if I click on that open folder icon for V2, you'll see that it opens up in a new tab. Now the other icon, which looks similar to an upload icon, represents the promote feature. Now pay close attention as I show you what happens when I click on the Promote feature. So as I click on it, you'll see that the version was promoted or bumped up to the top to represent version number four or the current version, but it also stayed in its original spot. 
So I'll go ahead and close out of these two tabs and click on the open folder icon of V4 to open it up in a new tab. Now let's take a look at these other three tabs in the version control dropdown. The second tab here is titled Uses, which will show any other files that the current design references. So obviously it's empty because the box does not reference another file at this point. The third tab is titled Used In. So if we were to copy this component and place it into another file, then that file would show up here. The fourth and final tab is titled Drawings which will show any relevant 2D drawings that the design is used in. Now you'll also notice a few other items in the version control dropdown. You'll see when it was last updated and by who. And you'll also see who the file is in use by. So this becomes extremely useful if you work on the same files with a colleague or a team of other people. Last but not least, we have the Open Details on Web link, which will open up your Fusion 360 hub. You'll be able to view the file and take a look at different versions in the drop down list. From here, you can also edit the file in the web browser, which is still kind of being beta tested. Or, of course, you can open it in your Fusion 360 desktop app. Now, a few other things you can do include commenting on the file. You can share the file or have a live review with teammates. You can download the file in many different file formats. Or you can copy, move, or delete the file. Now let's go back into the Fusion 360 app and close the data panel to get it out of the way. Now if we look at our file, you can see that we have many different versions of this box saved. Now saving version descriptions really depends on your workflow but I don't recommend hitting the save button every single time you make a small change. I was simply saving each time we made a change for demo purposes. It's a good practice to save different versions anytime you make major changes or adjustments to the file, especially when you're uncertain whether you're heading in the right direction. To recap, like I said earlier, we don't have to keep clicking save after every small change. In fact, your Fusion 360 will auto save every so often based on your preferences. If you select your name in the upper right hand corner and click on preferences, you'll see under the general tab that we have a few options here related to saving. First, we have the automatic recover save time, which is defaulted to five minutes. So you can change this number to autosave your Fusion 360 files either more often or less often. Obviously depending on the number that you put in. Just above that you'll see that you can select or deselect automatic version on close. Now if you have this selected it will automatically create a new version when you close your file. So if we had this setting enabled prior to working on this box file had we clicked on the X to close out of the tab, the version number 5 would have automatically been created. The next and final save option just above it would be the offline cache time period, which is the amount of days that Fusion 360 caches your files to your local machine. So if you were going into Fusion 360's offline mode, you would still be able to access your files because Fusion 360 isn't just saving your files to the cloud. They're also being saved to your local machine. Check out the video description where I'll put a helpful article that will show you how you can find your .f3d files on your local operating system. So basically, this number represents the amount of days you want to be stored should you have to work offline on your local machine. So the larger your hard drive or storage is, then the larger this number can be. But again, it really also depends on your workflow and personal preferences. I like to keep mine set to 15 because I rarely work in offline mode. Now one last tip here before we end this video. You can also cache certain files to ensure that they're available locally. So if you haven't worked on a file for 15 days, then I may want to make sure it's available if I know I'm going to be working offline tomorrow. If I wanted to make sure that this box we just created was an offline cache, all I have to do is simply open the data panel, 
right click on the box file and select add to offline cache and you'll notice that it will have a little loading spinner to show that your file is being cached to your local machine. Thanks for watching. Be sure to ask your questions in the comments below. Hit the thumbs up icon if you learned something in this video and click subscribe followed by that little bell icon to be notified of more Fusion 360 tutorials.